Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Marnie. I am actually one of your city council members here in the city of San Diego. I also happen to be a Peace Corps volunteer. And I first want to make sure we thank our host tonight to Justin and Brandy for the excellent job they're doing. So say we all. I also know that among the various storytellers here tonight, there are many members of the audience who served in the Peace Corps here, who gave at least two years of their life to make a profound difference in our world Given the conflict and the wars, we have people in this country who care and want to make a change. So if you were in the Peace Corps, please raise your hand. We want to give you a round of applause. No age There's no age limit for the Peace Corps, just so you know. So in the Peace Corps, we passed around a few tattered books we affectionately called Peace Corps Bibles. One of those books, Mountain Beyond Mountains, was a story of the life and heroism of Dr. Paul Farmer, a Harvard physician who spent significant time uh, going to Haiti to do work in education and health policy. The book's namesake is based on a Haitian proverb that means when you solve one problem, another problem will present itself. An older, more experienced Peace Corps volunteer slipped me this beat up dog-eared book when I had just finished my training in the capital city of Botswana in Haveroni and was ready to begin my two-year Peace Corps service at a northern part of the country. You're gonna wanna read this, he said to me. I read the title, Mountains Beyond Mountains. Why will I need this? I looked up at him in confusion, naive as to what I was about to experience for the next two years. Because, the older volunteer said, in Botswana, there are mountains beyond mountains. The landlocked country of Botswana in Sub-Saharan Africa was once one of the poorest countries in the continent when it gained independence from Britain in 1966. Peace Corps volunteers came soon, soon after Botswana independence, and in the next few decades, over 1,800 Peace Corps volunteers came to serve in that country, touching nearly every sector of the country, from education to health to environment to urban planning to economics. <coughs> Botswana is also known as an island of peace among its war-torn neighbors, with the violence of apartheid in South Africa on its southern border in Rhodesia, which became Zimbabwe on the eastern border, in Namibia on the western, in uh, Zambia in the north, Botswana was the only country that never had a war for independence. That is because in 1966, Botswana seemed to be an empty, vast desert, devoid of resources in one of the poorest nations in Africa. But the very next year, after they got independence from England, in 1967, De Beers Diamond Company discovered the largest diamond mine in the world to this day in Arapa, an open pit mine. Had the diamond mine been discovered merely one year earlier, the Queen of England likely would have held on to that country like a vice grip. There would have been a bitter war for independence, an ensuing civil war after that, but there was not because they were never had a colonized power. Because Botswana had its own government, it was able to negotiate a 50-50 partnership with De Beers, called Deb Swana, Botswana De Beers, Deb Swana, allowing the Botswana government to keep at least half of the proceeds from the diamond sales in its own country. In the years that followed, the nation transformed itself into one of the most economic powerhouses of sub-Saharan Africa. The government built infrastructure and roads and hospitals and schools and electricity. Due to Botswana's remarkable economic transition in 1997, Peace Corps ended its program in the country. But then in 2003, only a few years later, the president of Botswana at the time called Washington, D.C., President Bush II, and said, can you please bring the Peace Corps back to Botswana because everyone is dying of AIDS. 
The AIDS epidemic had gripped the country, and to this day, Botswana is the only Peace Corps program in the world where the volunteers are only dispatched to help with the HIV and AIDS crisis. My job was to serve as a social worker caring for children born with HIV whose parents had died in the AIDS epidemic. We had a saying in Botswana that said Saturdays were for funerals because so many people would die during the week. We couldn't take off Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday to bury people, we had to wait. So on Saturdays, we'd have one or two or three or four funerals during the day. One of the greatest challenges that modern medicine had to tackle with a highly transmittable retrovirus like HIV was preventing mother to child transmission in the womb. When antiretroviral, antiretroviral medication finally reached that threshold in America and it finally got to Africa, we by and large were able to give women antiretroviral medication so that babies were born HIV negative and had that chance in life. But then the next challenge surfaced. What would these newborn babies eat? Breast milk was no longer an option because HIV can be transmitted through a bodily fluid such as breast milk. So the local government, me included, the social worker, started passing out cans of tinned powdered baby formula. But the problem was baby formula in a rural village with no electricity and no running water soon became synonymous with you have AIDS. No other mother had baby formula. So as we tried to hand them out, women would turn away and they were scared and we, turned and we found out it's because they would be stigmatized. So we started to pass it out in the dead of night letting the mothers feed their crying babies at midnight when nobody would see. After years of an anti-stigma campaign and with the HIV rate climbing to a near 20% of the population, the fear of being found out HIV positive finally faded away because so many people were, and women didn't need to hide their powder baby formula anymore. The problem, though, was that all these babies who were now being born without HIV were still dying. So many babies didn't make it past their first birthdays. And it wasn't because of AIDS, it was now because of the water. You see, the water in the village was not clean, and whereas the adults had finally built up an immunity to the water over time by eating fruits or vegetables washed in it, the babies, and the one Peace Corps volunteer from America could not take the water. <laughs> uh, there were many days when the water being piped in from the farmlands was particularly contaminated, and there would be all of the little kids and me lined up at the clinic after throwing up all night, waiting for the life-saving rehydration powder we would get. The babies weren't supposed to drink the water. They were supposed to drink breast milk but what needs to be mixed into water to be consumed? Powdered baby formula. We as government workers had educated an entire population of women, trained them to use this formula, and it wasn't saving their babies' lives. My heart was broken. Just as we'd finally solved one deadly problem of having kids born with HIV, another one had surfaced. And that's when I knew what that older volunteer meant. There are mountains beyond mountains. The local health ministry eventually rolled out a boil water campaign, and we taught women to boil the water to kill off any contagions and cool it before they mixed it with the, with the powdered baby formula. I, for one, was more than happy to help with that because it also helped me from many nights of stomach issues. And with that campaign, we finally got the death rate down, and babies were now thriving and surviving. During the two years and four months of my Peace Corps service, I learned the values of perseverance and grit, and things can be so challenging that if you're not laughing, you're crying. But I also learned the value of celebrating the small things, like birthdays. I didn't know if any of these children born with HIV would ever have another birthday, and I didn't know how to solve the AIDS crisis or find a cure to this disease, but I did know that children thrived when they are loved, and so I decided to start celebrating all of the children's birthdays in my village. 
I would beg my parents from here in San Diego to send me packages full of flour and sugar and baking powder and chocolate chips, and I would make the best chocolate chip cookies I could over an open flame. <laughs> and <laughs> they, weren't, they weren't great. <laughs> We would decorate with a couple streamers in the trees, and we'd celebrate children's birthdays to make sure they knew they were loved if they didn't have another birthday. But one day, a young man, Sean Ducani, knocked on my grass hut, knocked on the door. He was about five or six, and Sean Ducani is crying and sobbing. And I opened the door, and I said, Sean Ducani, what's wrong? And he said, I don't know when my birthday is. He was only two years old when his parents died of AIDS. They never told him what his birthday was. So we were watching all these other kids around him have their birthday parties, and he realized he would never have one. So I sit there, and I'm thinking, you know what, Shondu? You are the most special kid in the whole world, because guess what? Only you get to pick what day your birthday is. And no other kid gets to pick what day their birthday is. Out of all 365 days in the year, what, year, what day do you want your birthday to be? And he says, tomorrow. <laughs> And so we did, we had his birthday party. Uh, my village has now got electricity and running water in the 20 years since I've been there. And they messaged me on Facebook and Sean Ducani is now 18 years old and he's a goat farmer. Aww. So of the many things I've learned in my journey in the Peace Corps and how people really can help how the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation made sure to send AIDS drugs to kids in Africa, how we had caring volunteers, how the Mayo Clinic came together to dispense those drugs. There are things that we can do in this world to persevere in the face of insurmountable challenges. And I've also learned that sometimes there are mountains beyond mountains. Thank you. Marnie Van Wilper, ladies and gentlemen.